Well, good morning again, everybody. Welcome to Lynn on the Line, the place where you can find straight talk for your life, your faith, and your business. You know, it's always my goal to help you see all those things in a whole different light. Uh, yeah, I've been on a little bit of a tangent here lately. <laughs> some of you have heard it and some of you haven't. But, you know, as someone who's been an entrepreneur for decades now, um, it's not easy to watch how easy it is for people to create a job for themselves instead of building a business. You know, success comes with sacrifice. There's no doubt about that. It takes hard work, determination, tenacity, perseverance, patience, and it definitely takes a plan. But lacking any one of those things will probably mean that you won't actually be building a business. You'll get discouraged. You'll stop, or you may just be creating a job for yourself instead. There's nothing wrong with that. But one of the, the, the sources of frustration for so many of us in business is trying too hard to get other people to switch from an employee mindset to an entrepreneur mindset. It takes a dream to make that happen. And frankly, very few people make that switch. That's just, you know, statistics, right? Mostly because they're comfortable having a job, more comfortable than they would be taking on the responsibility and, and the hard work it takes to build a business. But let me tell you something. Every single business on the planet requires duplication to find success. This, this industry is no different. Every single business requires that. The more people you have doing what you do, the more money comes into the house. If you're in real estate, you try to bring in other realtors onto your team, guiding them and coaching them to find their success, and each time they make a sale and it goes to closing, you get a little piece of their pie for yourself. Each one working toward the ultimate goal and each one benefiting for the business. We see a similar pattern even in the brick and mortar world, right? Uh, let's take a restaurant, for instance. When a restaurant owner gets a good thing going, he or she will usually set out to open another location. The owner can't be in two places at one time. They know that they need to duplicate. So they rely on duplicating their efforts with each one they set out and everybody having a common goal. Naturally, the owner profits from each location through duplication. It's not unique to this business. Entrepreneurs understand the necessity of duplicating for success, right? On the flip side, you know, other people are content with a job. So they don't set out to duplicate or, or they don't, you know, do what it takes to get duplication accomplished. One of the risks that many of you face in your efforts uh, uh, to duplicate your business isn't necessarily that you don't have a system per se to duplicate. Most of the problem is that you mirror a, a job by what you do. And most business builders, they don't want a job. If, if I set out to add to my real estate team, for example, and I, and, and I set out with each one telling them, you'll be mopping floors, you'll be making copies, you'll be sending fox, faxes, you'll be distributing the mail, you'll be putting up signs, you'll be cleaning the houses, you'll be mowing the lawn. Are you kidding me? Nobody would ever want to work with me because I would have painted the picture of a job instead of showing them what a business looks like. We lead the way, you know, by duplication, um, by conducting our own business and putting forth out our, putting out our own effort in a way that reflects what our world is really like. Many of you are like that real estate scenario, though. The picture you paint looks a whole lot more like a job than it does about a business or a big vocation. In your world, this is a news flash for you. And by, you, know, you, you may be labeled a distributor, but that does not define what you should be doing. A distributor actually manages tangible products. They have a hands on them. Sometimes they warehouse them. You know, sometimes they you know, uh, buy them at a discount, mark them up, and resell. A distributor distributes the product, packing and shipping from here to there. And most of you don't do any of those things. You know, I don't want uh, you know, to do any of those things. It wouldn't appeal to me because I don't want a job. <laughs> I've worked for myself too long. That doesn't mean I'm very hard working. I'm not lazy, but I want a job to make me money. I mean, I don't want a job. No matter what you call yourself, Many of you are painting a picture that doesn't appeal to most people inclined to be entrepreneurs. Those things appeal to people that want to create a job for themselves instead. We learn everything meaningful in life by duplicating success. It's true in relationships. It's true as we parent. It's true in the journey of faith. And it's definitely true in a business. The best lessons, the, the, the picture of success, the things to duplicate start at the top, and work their way down. In relationships, we watch other fruitful relationships, you know, how other people have made theirs work, and we learn so much about the success rate when we do. When we parent, we either mirror what we saw growing up 
for some of us, but that's not such a great idea, right? Or we duplicate the style of parenting that we see that has clearly been working. In our journey of faith, Jesus Christ is the one to follow, not man. We get things pretty messed up when we tune into man and not to God. Jesus taught us how to live, how to work, how to love, how to forgive, and how to build a business. In our world, we turn to the successful ones, or at least we should, the top of the top in our world, in fact, the top of the top in our industry. What you see there is usually a totally different look than what you do in your business, from the way you present a product or when you present a product, the way you present the business, the way you share. You know, the top of the top in our industry cares about having a good product. There's no doubt about that. They care even more about having a company that can produce the product at a fast rate. So if they get a lot of sales going, they want to be sure a company can produce. They turn to the compensation plan, see if it makes financial sense for them. And then they gauge whether or not they think they can get other people on board to build a business too. The top of the top in this industry does not and never has hustle products. Well, they, they make sales, you know, that's for sure. But they don't sit people down and spend hours to educate them. They don't focus more on the product than they do on the opportunity. They're still wanting to build dreams, right? They don't chase people down to install a product or to clean a product, and they don't set up a water delivery service, you know, going from home to home to drop it off. The top of the top chooses a company to work with, which is a vehicle to accomplish their financial goals. And, you know, that's exactly what they keep looking for. They look for a good company, a reputable company, somebody that, a company they can trust to be able to back up what they're about to do. These people sing the praises of the company and the leadership like you've never seen before. You see that in, in our business. And then they duplicate. Who else wants to build a business and not create a job? Who, who else wants to focus on an income opportunity more than a product? And, and that's where the duplication begins. What we see more of is that job that we're reflecting. You know, we, we say, who else wants to educate people about the product? Who else wants to begin a delivery service? Who else wants to continue to do service uh, for that product long after product is sold? Who else wants to hunt down, you know, information from, you know, from filters to faucets to brochures and everything in between? Entrepreneurs always go through a learning curve too, but entrepreneurs duplicate business in hopes of adding business builders to their team. If the top of the top did what most of us are out there doing, you know what? They wouldn't be the top of the top. So you have created a job for yourself often, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people want to do that kind of thing. But you have to consider and be real with yourself. Do I want to just duplicate a job, or do I want to build a business? If you sincerely desire to build a business, then you might want to consider the picture that you're painting to other people about what your world looks like. If it looks like a job, I'm going to tell you something. Most entrepreneurs are going to pass. Sad but true. If it looks like a vehicle to produce wealth, then you know that they want to produce a solid company, you know, a good reputation, superior products, financial stability, the ability to mass produce as needed, a good comp plan. It's with these things you get the attention of the business builders. And it's those things that we should be duplicated. But listen, we have superior products. Right? We know that. There's no, you don't have to convince anybody. It's second to none. The products stand on their own. And we always need to be willing to share what we have. But naturally, uh, those of you at a water store, of course, you have a different duplication kind of system. But in the field, the field is focusing on the details just like a job. And if you like your job, keep it and run with it and give God thanks for it if that's what you like to do. But if you want to build a business, then you need to learn to duplicate what the successful ones do. And I think if you look very closely, you know, what you'll see, you'll see that what they do looks a whole lot different than what you do. So you've got to consider, have I created a job, do I want a job, or do I want to build a business? And both are honorable and good. But once you decide which one of those you want to pursue, then you'll see what you need to be doing to duplicate. In relationships, we follow the successful ones. In parenting, we follow the successful ones. In our faith, we follow the only one. And in business, we always need to duplicate what's already been proven to work. If it ain't broke, you don't fix it. The top leaders didn't stop, do, didn't stop to do all the things that you're doing uh, when they started making a lot of money. It's not like they used to do it and then they quit because they're rich. That's not the way it flows. Their message was different, right? And they never did what you do for the most part. They set out to build a business filled with other people who also wanted to build a business. 
And that's what you duplicate, folks. You know, I made a, a phone call here recently to a former client and um, it turned into a good friend. I actually did some training for him, top leader, and you all know the name, Amway. And I was just asking him, I said, you know, I, still, I marvel at what you guys built. You know, he's probably done it for 50 years now, right? And built tremendous wealth. And I, and I talked to him several times about his business over the years. And I said, when you got started out, you know, what, uh, how much training did you do? And you just, you know, what, what did you teach these people? What kind of systems did you have? And he just kind of laughed at me. He said, the best training is to have people follow the leader. What they follow is the passion. What they follow is the dream, the possibility, the financial possibility for them, a brighter future, freedom. These are the things he's telling me. And he said, when you've got somebody excited, somebody on fire, they're going to follow you. You don't sit them down and lose your momentum and focus on details and try to create a job for them. What you do is you create that dream and you keep spinning and spinning to keep that dream going. So you've got to look at that, folks, and see. If you really want to build and you want to find people who also want to build, you've got to paint a, a little bit of a different picture. You know, when you talk to our leaders, you see people, or you'll see somebody out there, for instance, and she's like a sales machine. She's always getting a product sold, right? But you can rest assured, Cynthia is selling the opportunity, and it's backed up by a superior product, second to none. We get excited about what we have our hands on, and, and we tend to focus more on the product than we do the opportunity. But just like my uh, the friend I called said, he said, you know, a lot of people made money, uh, selling products, they sold detergent and makeup and stuff like that. A lot of people, you know, made money. They didn't build wealth and they didn't build an empire, but they made a living selling products. But the real wealth came from the people excited about what was possible for them financially if they just set out to build a business and they followed that passion. We see that a lot in our faith. You know, when people first come to their faith, they're passionate and, and, and they want to follow our leader, right? They want to tell everybody and follow our leader. But in time, if you're not careful, that sizzles out. And it's a problem in the church, and it's definitely a problem in the business. So on that note, I, want, I would like for you to just think about, am I building a job? Do I have a job? Or am I actually building a business? And as you consider your own efforts, just take a look at it and say, if I really want to bring uh, into the folds of my world other people who want to create just a great organization, would they be willing to do what I do? Is that appealing to them? Or should maybe you refocus a little bit and do what the top does. The top talks about opportunity that is backed up with a great product and it's backed up by a great company. The opportunity is first and foremost. And so that's it for me today. Guys, I'm going to go into um, the Q&A mode. I, star 6 is how you get into the, to the Q&A. So I hope that you'll have some comments, questions. Uh, and, and again, guys, this is not just from the message that I share with you today. If you have anything you're struggling with, any ideas that you need to pass by, take advantage of that. So hold on one second. You get your star six ready, and I'll go into the Q&A. Okay, guys, we're in the Q&A. Star six will get you in. I hope that, uh, you know, this message I know has probably been painful. Uh, it's never my intent to inflict pain on any of you. But sometimes, uh, you know, some people can't see the forest for the trees, and sometimes they kind of need to to think about what they're doing. And unfortunately, we, have, we are the most amazing business. That's not the unfortunate part. We have the most amazing people. And we have people that truly not only want to build a financial success, they need to build financial success. And you know what? That doesn't usually come by having a job. And you don't usually duplicate a job. So think about you know, that real estate office, for instance. If you told realtors, we mop the floors and facts and clean the houses and mow the lawns, who would ever want to be in real estate? You know, we understand in that industry, our job is to build a dream. I'm going to show you how, a house and hope you dream your way in there. And that's our job, to build the dream. And then we get a backup for, you know, all those other things. Somebody gets hired to get the job, and they clean the house and mow the lawn or do the facts. We don't count on um, the realtor slowing down from doing the things that produce success and wealth long enough to do all those menial tasks that, you know, somebody else can do in a job. And so I hope you look at it differently. It looks like we're getting some people in the queue here. And first up is Debbie Loveless. Remember, guys, it's star six if you want to get in the queue yourself today. Hold on one second. Debbie, are you with me? I am. Good morning, Lynn. Can you hear me? I can. Good morning. Awesome. 
awesome call this morning on um, I did, didn't get on at the very moment um, it began but I think it's on power of duplication so I love your topic this morning and I, I kind of found over the years I reflect back on my own business and um, that I, I was a paper person I was a detail person I love um, I, I gravitated to the computer and I, I always considered myself an educator a resource so I I guess I followed that category you stepped on my toes real hard about <laughs> did I create a job for myself <laughs> Or am I? Uh, and I know that my, my that's why I'm part of part of your class is to learn how to to where to go to fish and what to offer the fish and um, the lure and the bait. That's it. That's and that right. Bring, and that brings me to my question. So you've got a variety of resources. Um, you know, even in our in our own everybody business has a, has a different way of reaching out to to find their target market, to present, um, to offer offer what it is that, that you have. Can mm -hmm. you offer some suggestions? Um, okay, so now there seems to be some good interest. So what are some of the ways that you work with your uh, potential clients um, or <clears throat> um, um, business partners to help take them to the next step? What kind of questions do you ask? What, do, you, do you send them somewhere for more information? Or what, what kind of system do, are you using to do that? Well, I think it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Again, so many people are leading out with a product. And that's kind of obvious, right? You're leading out with a product, then you go demonstrate the product, and you do those things. But if you're leading out with business, the next best thing, I think, would always be to connect them with somebody else excited. First, you have to be excited. And then somebody else has to, you know, come into the fold, and, and, the, and that momentum grows. So it's really not as much as asking the questions as putting the right bait out there and getting them excited. So it really does depend. If, you, if you're product-driven, uh, then you want to demonstrate products and do that sort of thing. And, and a three-way call, of course, is always good for that as well. But uh, it, it really does depend on what you're looking for. I, it would be interesting to see so many people that have been so driven toward the product actually transition over to, to, to be more driven toward the dream. And that's really where the success is found. So with that, it's just I've got to introduce you to this person. You'll be so excited. You think about it, again, you parallel it with faith, right? Um, it's not necessarily when you're sharing your faith that you want to drill somebody. You don't need to really ask a billion questions, and you certainly don't need to go out and do, you know, some dissertation on Bible scripture. That's not the time to do it. What you want to do is paint a picture about what's possible for them if they do what you do, if they follow who you follow. And so it's more of an emotional thing. That's where the influence comes in. Um, more than it is about, you know, the, 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 necessarily the, the words you speak, I mean, not the words you speak, but the script you have or whatever. It's more about building the dream either way for the product or the, um, or the opportunity. Great, great answer. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. And I think that's part of, you know, the problem is, is we always do want the details, you know. Okay, what do I say? What, and it's normal. I'm not sticking on you. Um, you know, we want we want the details. What do I say? But it really comes down to how do you live? You know, just live your life. And once you get to know people and you understand, you know, where the need is, then you can talk to them about filling it. And I got to tell you, if you guys are wanting to build a business of any kind, I don't care what kind, I don't care what industry it is, it relies on duplication. And people don't want to duplicate unless it's exciting and it's a worthwhile opportunity. And so consider that. You know, there are plenty of people working in a mall demonstrating makeup and products and vegematics and that sort of thing. So we can decide, do we want to do that and just work for ourselves? Or do we actually want to change lives in a dramatic way? And when we do, we've got to make that paradigm shift. So thanks so much, uh, Debbie. I think that's it. Nobody else in the queue, star six. Last call if you want to come into the queue. I'm happy to uh, answer your question or conversation, whatever. I see Julia. Hold on one second. Okay, are you with me? Hello. Hello there. Hey, How are you? Hi. Hi, Lynn. I was waiting for the recording to to stop saying that, so I couldn't hear anything you were saying. I didn't know I was on the line. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you well, want to be on the line? <laughs> yes, yes. But the recording kept like it was kind of like slow and talking okay. about me getting you know. Anyways, I'm here. So my question is um, for you personally: How often and um, do you have to include uh, pre-filtering 
And do you have pre-filtering yourself for your household, for your – because I'm finding that that's like where in Mississippi that's very necessary. Well, and that's a good question. To answer it, I already had a pre-filter on my home before I knew anything about our business. Um, so I had that. I'm on a well. Okay, so I'm a kind of a different mm-hmm. picture there. Yeah. still have my own risk, right, with pesticides and all that stuff, but I'm on a well. But the more I learn, the more I see that, you know, we have, uh, we can't think of what we have as being a filter. It does filter out. We've got a great carbon filter. filters out as, you know, as much as it can filter out. It's a very good quality filter. But it, we're not a filter. So it kind of does its best and then ionizes. So my, in my opinion, I think probably everybody needs a pre-filter of some sort uh, before uh, water even makes it to the unit, just as a double measure, if nothing else. So that's my two cents. It does make it difficult. You know, you've got to think about when you're dealing with people, they're getting ready to make a huge investment and so, uh, in, the, in the technology, so, and then you're talking to them about spending more money. So you kind of have to get your head around how do you present yeah. that, you know, um, so that you don't just they keep getting surprised by you've got to buy this and you've got to buy that. But personally, yeah. I do think that it's, it's a necessity, especially city water when you've got so many pharmaceuticals and stuff that you just need – as much uh, power that you can get, and frankly, it probably will relieve the stress on the unit if you do pre-filter some of that stuff out first. Mm-hmm. Um, great, thank you for that. I ask this because we've had our system, our common machine, since 2015. Um, we don't keep medication in the house, thank, thank the Lord, because of it. And so we've been pretty healthy. I mean, we keep maybe a bottle of asp- uh, aspirin or bear you know, for mm-hmm. headaches in, right. in case we rarely ever take it. But just recently, um, since November, I started having this cough that um, mm-hmm. it wasn't congestion. It wasn't coming from the chest. It was just, it, it would start with like a tickle in the back of your throat and then I would start to cough, but then it was a cough that would close up my air pipe so that I couldn't breathe. And okay. then... Um, and so I was having issues, basically, is what I'm getting to. And I've, I've reluctant. I go to doctors now because we have the cognitive machine. I go to doctors for documentation. Tell me what right. it is. I can go home and do the protocols. <laughs> you know, right. I'm not taking right. anything. And so uh, this one particular, the ENT doctor, had said that I had acid reflux. And I was like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. Like, how I have it? Like, I drink water all day long. It's like I don't drink anything else. Um, mm-hmm. And I come to find out through, thank God, like we have a lamb on the team, you know, contacting him that our filter only filters out chlorine. And that's it. And so for a small place like mine with 25,000 population, he addressed that because it's so small, your population, your your water company or the, they're not going to test for a lot of other stuff. Right. And so he, he recommended a particular filter that was suitable for our house for the machine and so that, you know, we went through him. But the information that he was given out, um, he, he gave me information about my county from California. You know, and it was just crazy. But um, Oh, yeah, that's available online to anybody, though. You can research your own and find out. You know, when was yours tested? What did they find? What did they test for? It's available online for all of us. But, you know, I think it's a good idea. But also, one thing that happens to just about everybody, and that is, you know, they, they start, uh, they're introduced to technology. They start, you know, consuming this at a great, uh, you know, rate. And then you don't even realize that you're not consuming what you used to consume. Right. And sometimes it actually, you need to, doc, you know, kind of document, what am I drinking? And you know what? Sometimes you've got to drink more. I'm not a believer. You know, I know if you're hospitalized, they'll give you uh, your IV. The, the average prescription, I should say, for the IV is, you know, 64 ounces a day. And that's just to keep your organs from shutting down and, you know, mm-hmm. while they're trying to figure out what's wrong with you. That's not to hold, totally hydrate you. Right? It's just to keep your organs from shutting down. So how much do you need if you're actually moving around out of a bed, living life, walking, working, hiking, whatever mm-hmm. it is you do? So I'm not a believer in that, you know, small amount of fluids based on that. So it might be that you just need more. Yeah, 
and, and I have been drinking more because of um, the protocols. And um, thankfully, you know, even Cherie, her, I met a Chris at uh, her place in New Orleans who had shared with me about a woman who had the same issue and what she ended up doing, which helped her and is helping me now, is mm-hmm. she takes a shot of 11.5 in the morning and then she takes a shot of like 11.5 at night. Mm-hmm. You know, that helped, that, that has seemed to relieve some of the acid reflux. I know a part of it is having, I'm getting older, having to change my diet, my body's right. not reacting, you know, to all of those things as well, taking in consideration. And so, again, it, it's just going to be something that I figure out with the water. But I, I've come, I'm just sharing this because of the importance of, I didn't realize how important pre-filtering was because nobody, hardly anybody really talks about it even in our business. You know, we talk about this great device, which is, is awesome, is, is, is a godsend. You know, but well, I, excuse me for interrupting, but I think that's because yeah. we see it, uh, you know, as two different things. In other words, what we buy is technology that ionizes water. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's 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 right. calibrated, if you will, based on a neutral pH, and we have we have a device that ionizes. Right. And so everything else, you know, we we aren't in the business of doing an analysis and complete chemical breakdown of everybody's water and taking care of everything that you know before the ionizer. We're an I- we're not filters. We're ionizers. Right. And so that's why I think it's not some sort of uh, oversight or whatever. That's why I think, you know, you just don't hear a lot about it in our business because we're in the ionizer business. We're not in that business. And, uh, you know, so each one handles it, the, you know, in their own way. I tell everybody, get your water tested. If you need anything, call, uh, you know, an adjunct or call Ion Faucet. That's what I tell them. I'm not in that business. I don't want to get into it either. But um, we do have to, you know, consider all the problems we have. They're big problems. And, you know, we have, again, the best carbon filter doesn't just take out chlorine, but I'm not going to have that discussion today. But it does do a good job taking out as much as it possibly can, right? But that's not what we are. We're not a filter company. We don't have a filter. We have an ionizer with a good filter in it. And so anything before that, you know, um, I think individually we address our own, and I think we can direct people, you know, go to go look online, call Enagic or Ion and see what you might need. But I don't think it's, you know, it's up to any of us and probably not a, a wise thing to delve that deeply for our clients. Hmm. Um, I, I received that. And, and so when I got, when I was diagnosed with this acid reflux and the more I was um, trying to pick a lamb's brain and, and, you know, and trying to figure out what was going wrong, if I was doing anything wrong, or what, if there was anything wrong with my machine, I realized, and I, it, it came to me that if, if our filter in, in the system itself is only taking out chlorine and everything else stays, I know the water is still powered, the, the device is still powerful, but and it amplifies and it restructures the water, but isn't so that all of that other stuff. They say, you know, you take supplements. We, we take supplements with the water because it will it'll get into our systems a lot better and, and efficiently. So isn't that the, same, the truth for the, the stuff that doesn't get filtered out? Well, you'd have to, I'm not going to answer that online, but you'd have to go to, uh, you know, there should be still a breakdown of online with the magic, what it does take out, and probably treading lightly for this very reason. You know, people coming back saying that it didn't take out this and it didn't take out that. Now I'm sick. We're not in the filter business. So we've got to remember that. You have a good carbon filter, um, but we are in the ionizer business. And, you know, I just think the other side of it is that we're not getting any younger. I don't care how old you are on the line, you're not getting any younger. And so water, we have the, the best water. That's certainly the most important nutrient for the human body, but it ain't all we need. And as we get older, things change and challenges show up. And so you can't just rest on the water 100%. You also have to look at, and like you said, what, what, what does my diet look like? Do I have an issue? Listen, we're not going to, it's not like we drink this water and we're going to live forever. <laughs> you know, we're going to have a better quality of life. And, and it start, it's, a, it's a, uh, you know, basically a segue 
we're looking at a lot of other things that we do. You know, do we exercise? Do we get sunshine? Do we eat well? Do we have the right supplement? We got to look at it all. But the older we get, stuff's going to creep up like that. And when it creeps up like that, do what you do, right? Go to your doctor, figure out what the problem is, and then see how you can naturally remedy whatever's going on. But I think right. that, that's part of the problem is you think that, uh, you know, sometimes the way people talk, you actually could walk on water. And some people are getting pretty sick just not thinking, they're thinking that water's everything. It's not everything. It's the biggest thing, but it's not everything. Right. And so, you know, that's just kind of a, a, a dangerous place to be. But you're being wise to look at. You know, I think everybody should look at. And, and the way I say it is, you know, you're making a big investment in the technology. You might want to consider getting your water tested to see if there's a problem before that. We're not in the filter business. Right. Right. right? And so then I leave it up to them. Because, you, you know, you could really, we talk about the, the topic of the call was creating a job. You really could create a, a, a laborious job if, if you get down to brass tacks with each one of your clients. What is your source water? What kind of free filtration do you need? You know, all this stuff. You could really, you know, spend a lifetime with each person, but we're not in the filter business. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Right, right, correct. But, I mean, I, I still see it as we're into the people living healthier and better lives, better quality, and, and, and having experienced at least even somewhat of, if not all, that we're experiencing with the water, you know, um, personally. And then so the things that I'm experiencing is definitely not, you know, a coincidence that I have to look into this part so that, you know, if, if the people in Mississippi who are pretty much um, – you know, I'm coming against, I can't afford, I can't afford, I can't afford. And and so, therefore, well, how else can I help you? It's like, can I direct you to someone who can at least clean your water? You know, at, at least that part, and so then I direct to a land. You know, I, yeah. I mean, so I look at, like, the overall arching, like, helping people. And at least in that way, um, if if they don't buy from me a system, at least they, they kind of take away that I actually – not trying to sell them a system. I'm, I'm really generally caring about where they're at, whether, whether they buy right. a congregation from me. At that point, I still have created a relationship to get them the best kind of water or cleaner water at this point. You know, and then later. Well, that's true. Later, I, I think you know, that's, a, you know, just a, a, a judgment call, if you will. It's what you're passionate about. You know, if, that's a beautiful thing, and it's a good thing, right, to, to want to walk down that journey. The, the, mm-hmm. the topic today was kind of making a clearer picture. If, if you want, that part is good, it's beautiful, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do, or do you want to be sure that while you're doing that, you're also building a business? And right. so mm-hmm. we're building a business. Again, yeah. let's, take, uh, let's take Mary Kay. Everybody knows okay. Mary Kay, right? So Mary Kay, man, they can beautify you, make you look like a movie star. And so people demonstrate the product, make it look like a movie star. Here's what you can buy to look like a movie star. But they're always looking for more people who want to make people look like movie stars for the money, for the business, not because they want to stop and say, oh, my gosh, it broke you out. Let me research. Let me see what else you could do. Let me see what other color you might use. Your husband didn't like that. You don't do that. You, you, you paint the dream. And in that world, the dream is you could look like this if you own our stuff, or you could work like I work and build a business. You see what I'm saying? When we get down, and it's not that what people are doing, it's it's a beautiful thing. Your heart is a beautiful thing. And that might be your journey in life to share the way you're sharing. It's a beautiful thing. But for people out there, and there are lots of them, that not only want to make money, they need to make money, They need Mm -hmm. to understand what it looks like to be able to build the dream, build the uh, the business, the opportunity, more than they're dissecting a product. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. And so if you stay at the product level, that's fine. Just like I said, my friend said, lots of people made lots of money selling detergent, selling makeup, selling whatever they sell, the millions of products Amway has, right? Lots of people made a little money here and there, and they enjoyed, you know, the social side of it, the human side of it. But the other ones were saying, wow. Look at that guy on fire, man. I wouldn't miss a meeting of his for all the money in the world. They build that excitement of what's possible, you know, financially in our future. So it's a difference. It yeah. is. And neither one is bad. And neither, I'm not judging either one. But I, I hurt for people that say, I'm working so hard and I'm not building a business and 
I, you know, nobody's duplicating what I do. Well, most people don't want to duplicate that kind of stuff. If they want to build a business, that looks like a job. And mm-hmm. and if I and for me, I'd rather just go get a nice paycheck to do that job instead of you know working on my own to to you know make, produce my own income. I'd rather just go somebody else pay me to do that job. That's not mm-hmm. me. I want to build a business, and so mm-hmm. I'm just trying to make that differentiation between what we're doing, and if you really want to build and you really want to attract business builders, then they they're going to look to you. What are you doing? And and a lot of what we're doing is we're we're down in the field dissecting water and recommending faucets and going to pre-filtration and testing water yep. and cleaning units. We're not, keep, we don't keep moving to build the dream for more people. Hmm. All right. Make I sense? appreciate you. I appreciate you, and I apologize to anybody else if I'm taking too much, too, too much of your oh, time. Oh, no, you're the only one in the queue. You, were, you and then Debbie, that's it in the queue today. So it's been a pleasure to try to help you through this, and um, yeah. I hope my answers have made sense to you. Um, yes. It's really, guys, there's no wrong way. We're in a beautiful business with a wonderful company, superior products, integrity, stability. We've got a lot of stuff going on. It just yes. comes down to a personal decision. So I want mm-hmm. to create a job for myself and enjoy it and it's fulfilling and help people, or do I also yes. want to build a business? And it just looks, you know, if it walks like a duck, yes. quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So yes. what a lot of what a, a lot of us are doing looks like a job. So don't be surprised when you're not getting business builders because the picture you're painting looks more like a job than an opportunity for great things financially. Right, right. And right? And, and, and I so agree and it's why, um, and I don't know if this is appropriate um, forum to say this or not, but taking all of that and, and keeping in line with your the business and providing people that, I this coming February, next month, I'm going to sign up to be a distributor for the pre-filter company that I, I okay. bought from, you know, because that, that's what they offer. They, of course, you know, they don't have the Kangen, um compensation plan and, and that whole, you know, patent idea, but it's similar. It is similar. Well, that's, so a, that's a good thing. I mean, you know, uh, it, people coming out with the tools that we need, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, Tamia was announcing Tony has a faucet. That's a beautiful, it's, it's a needed thing, and frankly, it's a way to make more money. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. It's just that you have to come down, each person, and decide, yeah. is this, do I want this, do I want to create a job, I'll make a little money here and there, and just help people and do all these the logistics that I mentioned a couple of times already, or do I want to be so flippant excited? Listen, I, when, in my space, what I want to do is show people what's possible by how I live and what who I am. And, you know, they see him and me, and they want yeah. what I have, right? I don't want to try to win people by saying, sit down, shut up, let me educate you, let me take you to another yeah. thing, let me take you. That's not the way you lead people to Christ. And so right. to me, it's a very clear picture of I want to be as successful as I can in my faith, and my greatest desire in my life and my heart is to hear, well done one day. So that means I've got to be excited to share the possibilities of my faith, and the same should be true in the business, to be excited. If you're not excited and you're not trying to, quote, unquote, sell a beautiful future, you're probably not going to build a business. Mm-hmm. And it's that simple. That doesn't mean anybody's wrong for doing it the way they're doing it. But if that's mm-hmm. your desire, I don't want people out there frustrated because, you know, they're just not building when they don't understand that the picture we're painting is a job and it's not a business. So I do have to cut that off. I hope that helped you today. Um, thank yes. you all for staying with us and listening in. This is the way Lynn on the Line is supposed to work, by the way. People coming on, asking questions, and hopefully uh, God will give me the words to bless you. So you guys go make it a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.